and gentlemen, welcome back to Big Time Talkers. I'm Brad Gordon. I'm Charlie Haley. And I'm Benjamin Duncan. How are y'all doing this week, gentlemen? Good. Still. I'm not doing too um, bad. Closely watching the vote, uh, the question on question number two for watching the polls very closely on a certain question that some people may vote no for or voted yes for. If you voted yes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mr. Gordon, please explain to us what I am talking about. Hell no. I vote no. I voted no. I didn't vote. I didn't even, I'm pretty sure I'm not even in Jackson County. No, I'm not so either, but you know. This doesn't con- this doesn't can't. concern me. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't vote. Or Ben, I'm pretty sure Ben's not in Jackson County yet. Mm, technically no. he's in... I am not. What I am not in Jackson in? County. What county are you in? County you Cash in? County. Oh, that's right. Mm. I'm out here in the sticks, man. <laughs> I would not consider Raymore the sticks, but okay. <laughs> it's a joke. Ha, ha, ha. Oh my god, are the Reds making another comeback? What the hell? What is happening? Anyway. Ah, yes, it is the vote to see if the tax increase will go through for the stadiums. Uh, spoiler alert, I think it's probably going to fail. Because, I'm pretty sure uh, it's probably going to fail. Frank White's going to throw a hissy fit. And they're both gonna just going to leave the entire state okay, of look. Missouri and move to, like, Real Alaska. Talk. Real talk. If she's leaving Kansas City, I could fucking care less. They could go to the fucking Legends and all over there by the Speedway for all I fucking care. It's the Royals. I don't want them leaving the state of Missouri. I don't. I do not want them leaving the state of Missouri. How come? How about neither leaves and just signs an extended lease on the stadiums and call it a day because the Truman Sports Complex is... The Truman Sports Complex is goaded. You're funny. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> That's a fucking hilarious joke, bro. Yeah, you're funny, bro. That might be the April funniest Fools. thing you've ever just said. April that Fools. might be the funniest thing you've ever just said. April yeah. Fools. Good joke, Ben. Good joke. Yeah. Um. Because I am a Truman Sports Complex enjoyer. Um. I mean, I'd like it better if Arrowhead wasn't there. <laughs> Mr. Haley. You saw the thing I saw your you, you saw the thing I said to you the other day. Like we just called it Arrowhead Stadium now. Well, you know, a Boston Celtics game. Yeah. Well, I sent one to Ben and it was we call that Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs> I, I, I I I I literally told Brock I'd seen it today I'd seen it this week of uh it's like it the, being uh, the, 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 the Celtics or Lambeau Field. But then I saw the Lambeau Field one, and I was like, there was one that I'm like, I bet you someone did a college one, and it was like, we call this one Bryant Denny Stadium. No, that wouldn't fit. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you positive? Yes. I am positive. Would it be, which one would it be then? Oh, we call it Buckeye Stadium? No, yeah. that's actually that one then. Or the, the big shoe? house. <laughs> we call it the shoe. Nowadays, we call it Death Valley. Which one? Hold on. Which one? <laughs> you know which one. Uh, this one in South Carolina? Figured. Figured as much. Nope. Not the one in South Carolina. Uh. <laughs> call oh, Hall, Hall in Baton Rouge. That shit was actually really cool, though. I don't know why. But anyway, guys, professional baseball's back. Guys, yes, the Royals are below 500 already. What the hell are the Royals? You know what's funny? Your pitching is fucking amazing. Too bad, yet again, they always are having offensive troubles. You say that and doesn't know how to use a bullpen. That too. 
Here's the thing. They have a plus our, our three, three on run three year, Our goaded three year in a row, the, the World Series champion blowing an insane lead in the ninth inning. That's a Royals moment right there. Yup. But anyway, Ben, I believe you were at opening day with your brother. First of all, you yeah. Still out. <laughs> And which, by the way, uh, there were a total of 38,775 fans there. That is a sellout. That is a sellout, my friends. But anyway, how did you enjoy opening day, my friends? It's actually a very nice day. Oh, it was... Here, I'll, I'll grab some stuff real fast. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Can't wait for him to rub it in our face. But, uh, but oh, honestly, oh. it was super fun. We got there about, like, an hour and a half, I think, before the game. And the parking lot was already packed to the gills with people tailgating and stuff everywhere because oh, they had opened the gates to the lot at, like, 9 o'clock Thursday yeah. morning. But, um, we kind of, we, wa we walked around, uh, got into the stadium, choked to the gills, There'll be a video for this coming out. I because I recorded yeah. some stuff. There was there wasn't a lot. There there was a lot at the very beginning of the game, but after that, not a lot. But um, where's your other videos? I will be working on them this week, and there will be multiple things coming out finally. Yes, I know I'm behind. I'm behind. <laughs> I I keep saying it, but my little brother. Because he had stayed with me at my apartment from Wednesday night through this weekend because I drove him back home on Sunday. So he was here all this time, and so I was spending time with him. And, and if he wasn't here, I would have been uploading videos for you guys. But they will be coming for sure this week. But um, the stadium was packed. We got the Bobby Wood Jr. bobblehead, the, the Bobby Baseball bobblehead. Oh, I like the box uh, that it comes in. Yeah, there's that side, that one, that one there, and that right there. And you guys want me to do an unboxing right here for you? No, do it on another no. video. You know what's kind of funny? You know how Brock, when we went to opening day, we got our Bobby Witt Jr. bubble hat? I haven't even opened it. It's still in the box. But then, uh, besides that... I got I got him for for me and my brother, but we both since neither of us have ever owned a Royals baseball hat, we finally both have a Royals hat now. Wait, you've never owned a Royals I hat? I do not have a what? What? Every every Royals hat I've ever tried on has always never fit me. Hmm. Cursed genetics. But uh, we yes. both got Royals hats now, baby. We got the Kauffman Stadium opening day 2024, baby. On the hat. Kauffman Stadium, last that. season would... ever, baby. It'll be at the <sighs> stadium. If they get the downtown stadium approved. Gonna nuke it. Sir, I'm telling you right now, they're gonna move. They're moving to Arkansas. Northland. Come to the Northland. Just go across no. the Bond Bridge to North Kansas City. They're going to move to Omaha. Why would they move yeah. three hours north? Because there's already a natural fan base there in Omaha for the Royals. It's a growing city. They have a state-of-the-art baseball stadium. They have the stadium for it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was they're a moving, they're moving up. It was a good time. It was cool that the first at bat the Royals had of the game was a home mm -hmm. run. But um after that not producing at all and not giving any run support to Cole Reagans, which kinda sucked. And Bobby How Wicks, like, yeah, what do you mean times in a row. What do you mean that um, sucked? How are you surprised by this? How how are you surprised by this? I mean with with the twins players dropping like flies game one of the season. Uh, I would have expected them to do at least a little better, yeah, but well, yeah. no. 
It was funny though. There was a kid like four rows in front of us that was wearing a Royce Freeman signed jersey, and he got injured going around the bases. <laughs> Twin twins moment. Okay, I know you guys were like in the four hundreds, but yeah. Did you guys get like a close up view of how bad the uniforms look? Because they look bad on TV. Like the Twins ones oh. did not look good. The Royals ones, honestly, I. Right. I didn't really, I didn't really notice. I mean, from up there, like, and on whenever you showed them on the jumbotron, like you could see every once in a while one of those quick trip patches. But it's like, honestly, I kind of just blocked the pat those patches out of my head. Like I, I I blocked it, and so I didn't even notice it like the rest of the game. But watching it on TV is probably a little different. But um, it, it was a good time. First ever opening day I'd been to. I had a blast. It was fun. And he's had a blast so much at a Royals game, he's going again this week. Yeah, because my mom got me tickets. Yeah. Unrelated right. note, Tommy, what time does WrestleMania start on uh, Sunday? You <laughs> second, I got sneezed. Hmm. You bless uh, you, good sir. Thank you. On Sunday, unrelated note, but totally related. Uh, six. Do you all want to go to a Royals game on Sunday? No, I'll already be there on Saturday. They're playing the Twins, <laughs> or they're playing the Astros. But it's WrestleMania. I know the game starts at one. Oh, uh, it's a one p.m. pitch. I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah. Ben, you can come that way. There's your excuse that you're already at the apartment. No, I'll I'll, I'll meet you guys once you guys get done. Pussy. Anyway, speaking of WrestleMania. No Oh, yeah. Play my music. Someone ben, play, play my your... music. Ben, play this man's music. Play my music. The Rock has single handedly been carrying this entire. Cody and The Rock and Seth have been single handedly picking up a certain champion's load this entire fucking feud. Or feud? Is that the right word? Yeah, I guess I would say yeah, yeah. Anyway, last oh. week, let's go to last week first, where The Rock shows up completely unannounced on Monday Night Raw in Chicago and all that. He interrupts Cody during a promo. No words are spoken between each other. It's just a stare down. And then Rock whispers something to Cody. And some p interpreters will say, tonight, I'm going to make you bleed. And that's exactly what happened. The Rock fucking whipped Cody's ass on Monday. And we're talking... Uh, I'm pretty sure... I don't, I don't know if it was... He was bleeding the hard way. Or a certain... A certain COO said... Yeah, you can go ahead and start, you know... Taking a blade or two. And Cody heard that and said, Bet. Dude, I know Cody, when, when, when Hunter said, yeah, Cody, you can go ahead and blank for the segment. Oh, Cody must have been over the moon. So, anyway, The Rock is just beating down Cody. And he's using his, the belt, like the weight belt or whatever it is, to just whip him. And he's whipping him. Hey, yo. And, the certain, and certain people are making the jokes that are there, you know, because Rock is technically, his mother was, or his dad was, you know. Of color. So, some people were making those kind of jokes. And Cody is a blonde stuff. haired, blue eyed so, okay. gentleman. And so, here's the interesting part about this. So this ended Raw. And as Raw goes off the air, everyone's like, all right, cool, great segment, yada, yada, yada. The Rock said, fuck that. And he's like, cameraman, come here. He kept going, by the way. Like, he kept beating up Cody. And cutting another eight-minute promo. You know, 
all that. And then, also during this Raw, we had a fucking banger of a match between JD McDonough and Ricochet. Um, I ain't gonna lie, uh, I felt spoiled watching this match, because this should have been on TakeOver 2019. Like, I'm not kidding. This was an NXT TakeOver worthy match. And, uh, yeah, there was that. And then we had Drew McIntyre, CM Punk, Seth Rollins, uh, literally have probably the segment of, like, the night. I can scroll up and find the rating they did for it. here somewhere I can find it that would be great ah yes this is something rock sent me so the segment involving CM Punk Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre from last week's Monday Night Raw had a peak viewership of 2.2 million viewers this segment saw a 500,000 extra viewers turn tune in from the previous segments from uh, WrestleNomics I watched the full 22 minute segment. All three. Uh, can we make. Is it too late to not make Punk special guest referee for this match? It probably is. But. Not gonna lie. I feel like they could totally make Punk special guest referee. And that make that match 10,000 times more enjoyable. That match is gonna be good no matter what. But it would make that match even more enjoyable. Cause it could be like, you remember when Cena was special guest referee, and he was hitting AAs and all this shit on the wrestlers, and they would try to retaliate, and they're like, no, 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 I'm an official. Mm-hmm. So there was that. Um, what else? Ah! I'm gonna go away from Raw and SmackDown and Subset, and we're gonna talk about a certain, uh, show hosted by one Ariel, how the fuck do you say his last name? Hawani. Oh, Hawani? So, he has a Yeah, Ariel Hawaii. He had CM Punk on this week in his, on his show. And let's put it this way. Everyone realizes how dysfunctional and how much of a mess AEW is. And CM Punk literally put a nail in the coffin and reiterated how bad it is over there. It's literally... So, the takeaway I got from it, me personally, was like, oh, this is WCW in 2000. Like, it's literally 2000... It's like 2000, 2001 WCW. With the amount of mismanagement, the talent just not wanting to be there, or just... The dysfunctioning of talent in certain people and just the disrespectfulness of that. Just this just super, super dysfunctional. And then Tony Khan basically just it's just inmates running the asylum, basically. What I mean is the issue with Jack Perry in London, or leading up to that, he was basically cussing out Tony Schiavone directors, uh, a cert- I think I'm someone on the medical staff and all that, because of the stuff that, you know, reported that Jack-, Jack Perry wanted to use real glass, and Punk was like, yeah, no, that's not happening, not on my show. And he was like, if you want to do that, you can do that on Wednesday, not on Saturday, and all that stuff. And I guess Perry took offense to that, and obviously that led to the spot in... London pay-per-view where he was like real glass cried me a river and then Punk was backstage when that happened he's like please handle that and Tony Khan's like what do, you, what do you want me to do and he was like are you fucking serious be a boss <laughs> so there was that and then he couldn't talk about the brawl out because I guess there are some NDAs set in place which I mean he I guess he himself didn't sign an NDA because you know he was not in the wrong in that, which I fully agree with that. But basically, that whole entire thing with Punk 
and Ariel asking about AEW was just a straight up burial because AEW this week has been making a bunch of cuts, changes, all kinds of stuff to their rosters, and it's like, hmm, it's ironic what what happens when one person buries an entire company. And of course, every fucking AEW wrestler was like, "Thank you, AEW, la la la," and all that stuff. But yeah, so there's that. Oh, I have some breaking news. As of 18 hours ago, WWE announced Clash of the Castle is coming back June 5th, June 14th. Guess where, Brock? Guess where it's going to be this year? Scotland forever! Come on, Ben. Give, give, us, give us one for one. Yes. Clash of the Castle is coming back. Give, give it to us, Ben. In give Glasgow, it to us. Scotland. Tommy, shut June. the fuck up. Let him do this. <laughs> God, he's so loud that it didn't even register. Yeah, it didn't even. So, so June Good. 14th, SmackDown will be, obviously be recorded. It will be, SmackDown will be in Glasgow on June 14th. And then followed by Clash the Castle at the OBO, what was it, what was it? the OBO Hydro um, Arena or Stadium, whatever it is, on June fifteenth in Glasgow, Scotland. Scotland. Um, this will be the first ever premium live event in Scotland. So, I'm not gonna lie, it's really cool to see them in Scotland. I would not have been. If they said, yeah, we're going to run Wales again, I would have been completely fine with that. But it's really cool to see them in Glasgow, Scotland. But this is also reiterating that, yeah, Drew McIntyre is here to stay for a while. Um, what else? Oh, let me... Let's see, this week on Raw, they were in Brooklyn... Um, The Rock and Roman. The Rock and Roman. Yes, Roman Reigns actually decided to show his face once in a while and decided to show up on Raw. Um, Shit happens. Obviously, I guess the main event of Raw last night was fucking Sol Sokoa and Seth Rollins. And Seth got the win and then proceeds to get beat down by The Rock. And then here comes Cody and all that, and then Roman. Basically, shit's going wild. And guess what? That crowd was eating it up. And I mean, eating it up. So, let's see what else. NXT is currently happening right now. Um, for you there, Tommy. I just sent it to you. Sent to me on Twitter? Ah, uh, yes. That actually happened today. That actually oh. happened, like, five hours ago for us. The funny thing about that... We'll <laughs> so I watched about it, God damn it. So, I, so, funny thing... So, I guess today, as of this recording, at 3.30 p.m. our time, uh, Giant Almost and Otis uh, went up in a Big Eats Philadelphia cheesesteak and a pizza eating contest hosted by hosted by uh Big E. Um the funniest thing I don't know who won because I didn't pay attention to it, but the funniest thing that came out of this was Otis mispronouncing Io Shirai's name for I don't know how long. You know how he pronounced it? <laughs> Leo. L I O. Leo was like, hey Leo and then she would always respond. And they all were laughing at him like did I say something wrong? And they're like, yeah, you said something wrong. It's not how you pronounce your name. And she's like, he was like, oh, she always responded when I always said it like that. So I don't know what's, what the deal is. Yeah. Well, so, no. There was that. Oh, won? if Drew McIntyre this past week on Raw. Who won? That's what he was Who at. won the eating contest? I don't know. Probably Otis. Good, yeah! Blue collar solid! The uh, fat guy eats the wi- eating contest. Oh, yeah! Oh, the king! Oh. Hey, 
So, what else am I thinking? So, Drew McIntyre had a segment, a pre tape segment. That's where. A funeral home. That's where he had it. A funeral home. John Cena's house. A fucking, not just any funeral house. The TNA funeral house, by the way. Oh, shit. The what? Yeah. The TNA, TNA funeral house. Brock, if you know, you know. Total nonstop action, another wrestling company. But we show the video the funeral. Really? The TNA funeral house. TNA funeral house, Jesus Christ. What did he do? Put fucking. Oh, you know, he was just. Uh, Scottish independence to rest or something? Let me find what he did. Gooning at I, the I was funeral at work, house. I was at work Monday night, so I wasn't really able to watch Raw at all. Are you telling me that that one Drew McIntyre was fucking a dead body like Kane? No, he was home? not doing. He was not doing that. We do not talk about that. You, you telling me that Drew McIntyre pulled Katie Vick and screwed He's a not dead doing girl's Katie brains Vick. out? He's more of just you know being player hater of the year towards CM Punk. Basically yeah. saying R.I.P. CM Punk. He's like, here, I'm paying respects to CM Punk's career because it's dead and stuff like that. So there's that. You know what um, else is dead? What? My, any hope that I'm going to watch AEW again. Oh, no. I'm, I'm never God watching that shit again. Just before. release FTR already so they can come home. God damn it. Can they just go, yeah, I know. Can they go back to WWE? Because it seems like they'd be better off in WWE than they are in AEW right now. Let's be honest. Just let them yeah, on, AEW like, the also made some cuts. Um, they cut Stu Grayson again. Gravity. I know they don't have gravity, gravity. anymore. Gravity. So we're going to see people flying to the top of the stadium and not come down because, you know, they released gravity. Good. Um, just a bunch of fucking people. Uh, Parker Bordeaux was released. Who? Um, I don't know. I guess he was on NXT for a bit. And they weren't liking him on NXT, so he got released, and then he went to AEW. So you're telling me that AEW signed someone that sucks so bad in WWE that they had to release him? And it was AEW also citing budget, budget cuts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. For that. There are some people I've never heard on this list. I think most of these look like ROH releases. So, yeah, this is a lot of and yeah, these are a lot of ROH releases. Mm. Not really major NXT ones, other than like Stu Grayson and all major that. Major NXT releases, boy, that's crazy. I didn't, I didn't say you NXT. Had to, yeah, you no did. NXT releases yet. You said NXT. It doesn't say. These are like the list I'm reading. It that says from Sean Ross Sapp of FightfulSelect.com. Um. It says, not. It says her sources say none are soon to follow or any in the coming weeks. But those are the names that have been released. So there's that. Mm. Um. Oh shit! I'll say this in my MIP. I forgot. It's about a certain spot in a movie that I saw this past week. Oh, I know the spot you're talking about. <laughs> I'll say it in MIP. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I'm hell excited. I'm going to have my full reactions, full predictions for Stand and Deliver, night one of WrestleMania, night two of WrestleMania. So let's go over the card currently as is for WrestleMania 40. It's... I actually have it pulled up already, so. Okay, thank you. Can you post it in general real quick? Oh, I can post the link in general. And then, uh, Mr. Ben, will you read some of these matches off? Instead of Lincoln, um, I just posted in general. So, we have... Yeah. No, 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 no. Ben, go. Ben's gonna do this. Ben's gonna do this. This is my fucking segment, God damn it! I don't care. Ben's Ben's gonna be live... By the way, live reaction Sunday. 
to WrestleMania with the Fiend. Um, okay. Um, night one, Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. And Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Intercontinental yeah. Championship on the road. IC title. The I'll judgment. read this one. Like, can I read this one? Can I read this one? Yes. The Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus DIY, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus The Awesome Truth, Miz and Our Truth versus The New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier. You Woods said their name wrong. Down under Austin Theory and Grayson Waller versus New Catch Republic, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. Even though I'm pretty sure that's not what they were called before they went to WWE, weren't they like uh? Uh, what they British balling strong roots? style. British, oh, strong British style. Strong, yeah, British strong style. I like that name better than this one. Yeah. In a six-pack tag ladder match for the undisputed tag team titles, this is the match will end after both titles under the undisputed championship batter, the Raw and SmackDown titles, have been retrieved, making it possible the titles to split between two teams. Seth Tommy's gonna get his split championships finally. Oh my fucking god, thank god. Alright, Ben, you've got the next one. Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Brother versus brother. It needs a match stipulation. It can't just be a straight up singles match. It needs a match stipulation. Again, Mr. Ben. Then we have Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi. Versus damage hey, control. Damage, damage, damage control. And who's representing damage hey, control, hey. Ben? Dakota Kai, Asuki, and... Asuka. Thank you. Kiari Sane. Asuki. Asuki. <laughs> Whatever. The um, Latino World Order, Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Dang, he's, really? playing, he's going against his son, that's crazy. He is going against what? his son. This is the second remember, straight year in a row that this is happening, by the way. Hey Ben, remember there. when we showed you that match of Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero for the custody, custody of his son? Yeah. Well, this is the same son. Yeah. Now fighting his father. And the main event for night one, Mr. Ben. It is the Bloodline versus Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins. And who so, is representing the Bloodline? Uh, Some random dude named Roman Reigns and then The Rock. Some random dude named Roman Reigns. Just the no, longest no, reigning no, champion. No, no, hold on. Hold on. He ate wrong. He ate wrong. When he says some random dude, because no, Bahomi has been fucking non-existent this entire fucking feud, bro. Just, just a man that's held the title for four years, you know, whatever. No, held it hostage for four years. And Tommy, what is the stipulation for this match? So, this is a tag team match, but if Rose and Rollins win, all members of the bloodline will be barred from ringside during the Undisputed Universal title match on night two. Like, that's gonna fucking happen. But, if Rock and Roman win, the championship match on night two will be held under bloodline rules. Which basically means it's Anything a goes. no, it's just a no, it's just no DQ. So there can be run, run-ins, um, Use of weapons, all this kind of stuff. Just, but yeah, anything goes. So. All right, Ben. And the card for night two. Night two. We have Seth freaking Rollins again versus Drew McIntyre or McIntyre, whatever. McIntyre uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. Then we have. Io Sky versus Bailey for the women's championship. LA Knight versus yeah. AJ Styles. LA Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Why does why does the picture that Wikipedia has have 
uh, of AJ Styles and on his like on his Wikipedia article, why does it look like he's in? He'd be like a band member for something like Mumford and Sons or something. Jesus. I was thinking um, backup singer for Nickelback. Yeah. Uh, oh God, you're gonna make. I have to watch Logan <laughs> Paul. Uh, I don't think. Okay, hold on, hold on, Ben. I don't think you understand. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Logan Paul's actually like you know, dude. <laughs> Logan Paul's actually somewhat very decent in the ring, like really good. <laughs> Anyway, it gives the WWE a whole new fan base of twelve year olds. Um, pretty pretty much pretty much the reason why he's wrestling. Yeah. Logan Paul versus Randy RKO Orton and Kevin Owens. Hey, he recognized somebody for the yeah. United States Championship. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, you're learning. I know who Randy Orton is, bro. Where's he from? Uh, couldn't tell you, big dog. St. Louis. Ah. Uh, then and we have from Kansas City, and his grandfather is also from Kansas City. We have the Pride versus the Final Testament. And who are the members of each team? The Pride has Bobby Lashley, Angelo Dawkins. And Montez Ford with B Fab. I forgot she's part of that. Dude, I still can't believe she's still with the fucking company. I thought they the would have her ass. The final testament is Carry On Cross. Acam. Occam. And Rezar. 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 With Scarlet and Paul Ellering. In a six-man Philadelphia street fight. What the fuck? Fucking waste of a good match. It's a fucking waste of a good match stipulation. Like, you mean to tell me this six-man tag? We're going to use the Philadelphia street fight for this fucking match when we have fucking Jimmy and Jay Uso in a singles match right fucking there? Like, are you kidding me? Like, like, dude, it was written in the fucking heavens and the earths and the stars that this fucking match between brother and brother was going to be a fucking street fight. But no. We have the fucking six-man tag match doing the fucking Philadelphia Street Fight. Yeah, let's fucking do that. Let's let's waste a good match stipulation for WrestleMania against six people that we don't give a fucking shit about. And then finally, <sighs> Roman Random Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. Damn, he's really disrespecting the Tribal Chief like this, huh? Doesn't do fucking shit. The tribal chief Roman Reigns versus the American Nightmare, Cody Rose. Okay. So Ben, Tommy's obviously gonna give his predictions. Uh, I have my reactions. I'll record them sometime. I'll just I'll record them sometime tomorrow. Just I'll send it to you. Your predictions? Okay. So yes. Ben. We're going to go through night one, and you're going to give your predictions. Blind predictions. You know nothing about the storylines going into this. Ben's reaction, or Ben's picks for <laughs> WrestleMania night one. You have the card. Go through. Tommy, please write these down. God, no. i got to open this. I have to open this link want, back up again. I, I, have, I have it pulled up on Wikipedia. No, so I can write, go through write down his head. picks, because I'll be giving mine as well. I have it pulled up again. Okay. So, gentlemen... Night one, the women's championship match between Be Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. Who do you have winning? Uh, for you, Tommy, we're going Rhea Ripley. Oh no, I I'm doing mine separately. Well, yeah, I pick her anyways. This is my brutality. With... I'm going with mommy. Have Rhea. Okay. Match number two. Gunther versus Sami Zayn for the IC title. Walter. Yeah, actually, Walter. that was his name before. That was yeah, his name before, Yeah. 
Walter Hahn is an Austrian professional wrestler, Gunter. Yeah, his original name was Walter, so you know what? His I, name I, is Walter. Yeah, but I meant his in-ring name. Like his in-ring name was Walter. Walter. Was so We're going can... with uh, Sami Zayn. This, I like this guy's beard in his picture on here. <laughs> Tommy, the reign He's continues. There's only one man that can dethrone the totally not a Nazi. You know who it is. I don't Sir know exactly General will reign I know supreme exactly who you're talking about. And I that know. Mess, it's all fuck so much. They better. God, what if they did that in Berlin? They have the Zering General lose in Germany to an American. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. So we have the six pack challenge. Gentlemen, we have the six-pack challenge between Judgment Day, DIY, Austin Truth, The New Day, and New A-Town Day? Down Under, and New Catch Republic. Gentlemen. Why does Tomasco Champia, whatever his name is? Tommaso Champa. Tommaso Champa. Why does he look, why does he look like a liver king or whatever that dude's name is? Uh, because he's actually fucking insane. Um, yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, Tommy, Tommy, insane. Tommy, give me the awesome truth. Now, okay. Now, outright. To outright. reiterate. Outright. Outright awesome outright. truth. Outright. Outright. I don't care. I think they're going to do it. Because I'm looking at these other ones. I don't, I don't see anyone else that could possibly win them. Ben, you're... I ben. want the new day. I'm going with the New Day because I, I know the name Kofi Kingston. That's the only one that I actually know on this list of people. You don't know who the Miz been... is? Yeah, but... You don't know who our truth I, is? I, I, I like Kofi Kingston more. Oh, okay, fair enough. Alright, in the next step, you have down. brother versus brother. No, you gotta say it with some gravitas. Brother yeah. versus brother. Brother versus brother. Jimmy versus Jimmy Uso. Brother oh, no. versus brother. Why Jimmy do versus like Jay. That, man. The Usos. Main event J. Versus the right hand of the tribal chief. Jimmy. Who do you guys have? Jimmy or J? I'm going with Jimmy strictly on the fact that the picture they used for Jay, his, they did him so bad with his hairline. Is it a mugshot? No, it's his actual, just what he looks like now. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Mr. Gordon. It's just me, Oos! Brock has Jay, and Ben has Jimmy. Alrighty, the next match is the women's six, the six woman tag match between Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Control. Give me the female nation of domination. <laughs> I just said that. God damn it! <laughs> the baby face um, nation of domination. Yeah, boy, it's not lost on me that they are pitting. Uh, basically the only three black females in the division against two of the only Japanese and the only uh, New Zealander. So, that's something. Alright, so Brock has the nation. Ben, who do you have? And Ben? Um... The, the first three and uh, not damage control. Ben also Ben also has the thing. Strictly on the 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 fact of uh, the picture of uh, Bianca they have. Oh my god! Oh, I was gonna say, have you not seen Jade? Yes. Bianca, Tommy. Ben. 
Fantasy. Next match, we have the LWL and Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Logically, you would think the baby faces would win here. So with that being said, Rocky at the LWO. No. Give me Dirty Dom. He's getting his win over his dad again. He's gonna get a win over his dad. Ben? It's gonna be some cheating, like oh. Zelia Vega's gonna slap Ray or something. The very LWO. Ben would be all over this if it, instead of Latino World Order, it was Latina World Order. <laughs> no comment. And Ben would be like, yes! <laughs> Please! Please! I would be front row, bro. I'd be front row with the shirt and everything. Night one. Count me in. Of the main event. Night, main event of night one. Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth. Ben? The bloodline. The rock and only the rock. The bloodline versus the I, I want I want the the rock and this other guy to beat Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, and then just the rock beat beat up Roman Reigns at the end of it, and it's just him standing. That'd be kind of cool. So I have logic behind. Hold on, could you repeat logic. that? Hold on, could you repeat that? Ben. Hmm. Oh, for the bloodline to beat up the other two guys, and then The Rock, once him and the other guy beat the two guys, The Rock beat up the guy he's teamed up with, and then him standing alone in the middle of the ring. Hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going with the bloodline, but only because I want some Avengers level shit to happen. Oh, I don't care if it's an over. Yeah, there was something that said there was someone that said that that was like, I don't give a shit if this is an overbooked mess. I'm gonna have such a fucking blast watching this, and I'm like, I couldn't agree more. Here's the thing: I want night two. Cody's in trouble. Solo, Jimmy, The Rock, and oh, if I hear fucking out. glass shatter on Sunday, I'm gonna lose my shit. I, I, I am gonna. And, lose. and then I want. I want hang, on, hang, gonna, on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. And then I want Jimmy to run out and beat the fuck out of Jay. Like, murder his ass. Like, pulls out a gun and shoots him in the head or something. Like, something <laughs> heinous. Arn Anderson just shows up, gets him a nine. <laughs> Hang on. And then I want some Glash the Shatter. The Rock comes, or Stone Cold comes out, fights the Rock. They go up the ramp. So it's just Solo left. And who, of course, is the perfect person to beat up Solo Sokoa? Fucking MJF. No. No. Who is the perfect person to beat up Solo Sokoa? On China. No. Bob motherfucking Holly! Cody Rhodes' first tag I partner mean... that he won a tag title with. Comes out. Hits him in the head with a chair. Kills him. Murders Solo Sokoa. Starts eating his guts right there. Roman is shocked seeing his cousin dead neck. Two of his cousins dead next to him. Cody hits crossroads. Wins. Bob Holly comes to the ring, hugs Cody Rhodes. Dustin Rhodes sprints down the ring, hugs Cody Rhodes. Dusty, Dusty's force ghost arises somehow through the arena and hugs his son. Yeah, that's I'm right. Okay. I'm saying Dusty is here's, totally a fucking here's Jedi. What I, here's what I am worried about, especially for night two. Because last year, fucking Roman had, like, the Dark Souls fucking, like, a Dark Souls fucking boss entrance. And I mean, we're talking straight up fucking Dark Souls boss. And I'm like hella worried that they're probably going to do some shit like that again. And I was like, oh fuck, he's going to go. If I see that shit again, I'm like, oh fuck, he's going to go over. It's Listen, it's the American Nightmare in the Cradle of Freedom, the City of Brotherly Love. Tommy Dreamer comes out and shoots Paul Heyman in the head. Finish your story, Tommy. <laughs> and then he kills himself. Yes. Finish your story, Tommy. Finish your story. And then Tommy Dreamer shoots himself in the head. Yep. And then finishes the story. 
Finish the story, Tommy. Do what you were going to do at WrestleMania 17. You were going to kill Paul Hammond, and then you were going to kill yourself. So, anyway, to go over everyone's predictions, I have my own one. So, so to go over night one smash. Well, no, uh, you'll, night you'll one. review. Hang on. You say ours. Uh, right, that's what I'm going to go over right now. On on your review or your prediction. Uh, okay. Should I do night two as well, since, you know, we have you guys here? Uh, no, we will do that before the live, before the show starts on the live stream. Gotcha. And the B-Card Heavyweight Championship will be on the line. Ben will defend his title. We need to update the title. Huh? Now. You have your current, you're the current B-Card Heavyweight Champion, bud. Oh, you're God. You're going to defend your title on the live stream in predictions. Like me and Tommy always used to. I want to laugh my ass off if Bob Holly comes out and actually fucking beats up. Dude, could you imagine that though? <laughs> I would fucking. Everyone would like. Everyone's that would like, actually be kind of. That would the actually. The entire kind of arena's funny. like, who the hell is this ninety-six-year-old man? And I'm sitting here going, "That's Bob fucking Holly!" Yeah, kick his ass, Bob. Brian in Montgomery, Alabama. Or Huntsville. Mobile. Mobile. He's from Mobile, Alabama. Anyway, it's now time for Ben's list of things. Okay, okay. Just a second. Yo, yo, listen. Tommy on the mic. He's got the great disposition. Okay, All right. Ahead, Where Tommy. would you guys Tommy. like for me to start this year? Uh, or the, New today. Hampshire. New An- Hampshire. Anywhere. We'll find the, the Rapture? The Rapture. <laughs> Over in the Boston Harbor. Next to Harvard Yard. I'm going to the clan. I'm going to the Nazi rally at the Celtics game. Go to the garden. Gonna go me um, my own. Um, we're starting with. Tom Brady's college. We'll start with college. <laughs> what sports. College sports. Ben's trying um, to block out what we're saying so bad. The Not NCAA working. president, Charlie Baker, calls for a ban on college prop bets, saying they are threatening the integrity and competition. How about you don't be a soft ass bitch? Yeah, how about you stop being a bitch and start betting on games? And you realize how good we have it. <laughs> then then we have. Uh, is. We have. Uh, the Division Two men's national champions in basketball, gentlemen, as Minnesota State are national mm. champions in Division Two men's basketball. Not Northwest Missouri State? <clears throat> the dynasty is over. Um, March Madness, blah, blah, blah. Uh, UConn. No, UConn. No, 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 no. Oh, give me a March second. Madness. Give me a second. Both UConn and North Carolina State have their men's and women's teams both in the Final Four, which has never happened in college basketball. I'm so glad. For two schools to have both teams in the Final Four. The only other time something like this has happened was in 2017 when South Carolina had both their men's and women's team both in the Final Four. I'm not going to lie. A fall from grace so in uh, South Carolina men's basketball. I am so glad that NC State won the other day. So glad. Yeah. I can't wait for them to lose. I'm so glad first. UConn beat the dangerous man in basketball by 30. Oh, they just bit. I, I, dude, 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 UConn is just in a different fucking league than everyone. In the men's. Iowa, on the other hand, for women's, that's. Whew. <laughs> Also, uh, yeah, we we well, we also learned after that uh, LSU uh, Iowa game just how uh, racist the uh, Iowa fan base is. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you Ooh, if anybody looked on social media after the game, yeah, that was uh, I went through nice. some of the that I went through some of that stuff on my break after that game went final, and I was like looking through some of those tweets, and I'm like, whew, that's. 
That word's really ugly written out like that. That's, uh, whew. Some of those, but, uh, uh, some of those tweets started with an N, and I'll just <laughs> leave it there. And it's not Nigeria. But we also oh, had, from the Iowa LSU game, it drew a total of 12.3 million viewers, becoming the most watched women's college basketball game in history. It's probably because there was um, a bunch of racists that were saying some weird ass shit. Don't make this a race thing. Um, Bullshit! You know that's exactly what half those people watching were doing. Bronny entered the transfer portal today. Uh, uh, break, I have breaking news. He is now committed to the University of Missouri. No, we don't need him, Brock. We don't want. We don't want the media attention. Fuck you! I want everything on our own. I want don't everything. You want the attention? No, he's going to Ohio State, almost guaranteed. But uh, no, he's going to Akron. What are you talking about? He's going to go be a zip. Yeah, sure, buddy. Okay. But, um... And then finally, we have... everyone goes uh, to UConn. Auburn are once again SEC champions this week. As, over the weekend, they won the SEC championship in Equestrian. Damn. You heard that, right? But you know what? Out of the the four SEC schools that have Equestrian... Auburn won the, the SEC championship for it. Who are the other three? Kentucky? Couldn't tell you, man. Kentucky Probably. Kentucky definitely got to be one of them. I mean, come on. Uh, Let's see. Tennessee? SEC. Vander- Vanderbilt's got to be another one. That's some, like, frou-frou shit. Yeah, that's got to be Vandy. I'm pulling it up now. Yeah, Auburn Damn. won their sixth straight SEC equestrian crown. Damn. Against. A&M, maybe? Uh, no. Um, it was against... They, they won it, they won, no they won way. it against Texas A&M. No way. They won it against no. A&M. A&M, Kentucky, and who? Um, I was just thinking of the schools that would fit that profile. Let's see. Auburn, Texas A&M. Um... Uh, Looks like South Carolina. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, too. Who the fuck's the fourth? It's got to be Kentucky. Kentucky's known for horses. It says eight teams. Eight teams! Teams. Here we go. Auburn, Georgia, South Carolina, and Texas A&M. Oh. Kentucky's not... Wow. Come, come, Come on, Kentucky. Come on now. Your your but, fucking uh, state sport is horse racing. You're literally known for horses and fucking fried chicken. What the fuck? <laughs> we do have some WWE news this week no, that Tommy no, did not mention. There, there there is some there is another college championship that was very important that you have not mentioned on this podcast. Yes, Tommy. If you didn't hear, uh, Mizzou are. Chess national champions. Yeah, we're smart. We we had talked about that earlier on a uh, earning our stripes. Shameless plug. But um, go figure. You send four grandmasters down to a national championship. They're gonna win. Yes, but um, chess? yes. As opposed to what uh, Iowa fans were sending to the Iowa LSU game, they were sending grand wizards. Good one, Brock. Ha 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 All right. I thought that was good. Yes, as I was saying, we have WWE news in which Tommy has not mentioned about how the WWE reached out to Jason Kelsey ahead of WrestleMania XL to see if he would like to participate. He is partaking in the Andre's the Giant Memorial. He's going to host WrestleMania. Um, awesome. We have some UFL news. Hell yeah. In which St. Louis lost on a walk-off 64-yard field goal over the weekend. 
Dude, I can't even be mad about that. By uh, Jake Bates, a kickoff specialist who hadn't attempted a field goal since high school. In which we had, we had also iced the kicker after he had already kicked it, and so he had to kick it twice, and he made it both times from 64 yards. Damn. Um, and then uh, shout out to all the, the big men out there in the league because uh, the Brahmas punter threw a touchdown pass to their 300-pound center. Also, destroying the YouTuber kicked off in a USFL game or a UFL game. Yes. We have a couple of uh, NBA things this week, actually. What? Um, yeah, funny. But um, former All-Star Blake Griffin is now a manager at Costco. Huh? Like the bas- like the basketball player? Yes. Okay, I need to see. Okay, is there like photographical mm-hmm. evidence of this? Yes, there is. Yes, work. there is. Here, I gotcha. Show it. I need photo proof. I'm pulling it off of a uh, off of a uh, Reddit right now. Uh, we have breaking news in regards to the election. They voted they vote. no. Yes. Suck a dick, Frank White. Just kidding, I love you as a baseball player. You're and a shitty Paul. And uh, going on some uh, comments on this, it says, you're telling me Blake Griffin can't play two to five minutes a night for the Pistons? He'd rather work at Costco. I can't blame the guy. I wouldn't want to play for the Pistons either. Get ready to learn dollar fifty hot doggies, buddy. <laughs> but um, then the other NBA news we had was that LeBron was quoted over the weekend saying, in quotes, I'm like a 2003 Escalade that's never had its tires changed. Mm. That's, Uh, I mean... I mean... NHL news. NHL news, Brock. Jonathan Quick made U.S. hockey history by becoming the NHL's winningest American-born goalie, passing Ryan Miller for his 392nd victory. Ryan Miller shouldn't have been popped, but, you know, whatever. And just, uh, by the way, Jonathan Quick is the backup for the uh, New York Rangers. Um, MLB News. Uh, pitcher Jordan Montgomery signed a one-year deal with the Diamondbacks, Scott Boris agent, of a uh, one-year $25 million. Um, the Pirates sweeped a four-game opening road series for the first time since 1903. The trash can bangers, Ronel Blanco, threw the first no-hitter of the season in his eighth career start. And it's the 17th no-hitter in Trash Can Bangers franchise history. Trash Can Bangers are currently in last place in their division, by the way. And tonight, as of Tuesday, April 2nd, against your Reds, Brock, Bryce Harper became the first player since at least 1900 to hit three home runs in a game when he entered the day hitless on the season. Yeah, Speaking of Bryce know. Harper, did you all see that video of him like going for that fly ball in foul territory, and then him going yes. over the over the railing? And then did you guys see where the ball landed? No. Did you all see where the ball landed? No. Dude, like, it was it wasn't him. even close to where he was. Like at all. And then finally, in the NFL, the owners approved a massive revamp to kickoffs for a format that originated in the XFL. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. I think I have the, uh, where is it at? 
Yeah, here we go. The new alignment rules represent the most significant on-field rule change for the NFL in years and is designed to reverse more than a decade of declining return rates while also lowering concussion rates. In essence, the format will move the majority of the kicking and return teams downfield to minimize high-speed collisions. It will go into effect for one year only in anticipation of possible tweaks over time. During the 2024 season, kickers would continue to kick from the 35-yard line, but the other 10 players on the kickoff team would line up at the receiving team's 40-yard line. At least nine members of the return team would line up in a setup zone between the 35- and 30-yard line. Up to two returners can line up in a landing zone between the goal line and the 20-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see. It sounds really confusing, yes. but on paper, I think we've seen it in the XFL. It just looks – we've seen how they kicked off. It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. The Titans extended Legereus Need to a four-year, $76.4 million deal. Uh, so, the Lions – or, Tommy, go ahead. I have uh, – obviously, since we voted no – uh, the Royals tweeted something, and it's from John Sherman himself. And it says a statement from John Sherman regarding today's Jackson. Yeah, nobody Jackson. likes John. Whoa, it says what are you this. talking about? He's well, the it one says that's spending all the money. Yeah, he's the one that's spending all the money. It's one of like, the most active off-seasons we've had in fucking years, bro. Yeah, the hell, then? It says, quote, We respect the voters of Jackson County and the results of the election today. We will take some time to reflect on and process the outcome and find a path that works are a path forward that works for the world and our fans. End quote. It's from John Sherman. Oh, by the way, it was funny that uh, at opening day, uh, someone opened a banner directly from the, the top deck that reached all the way down to the bottom seating area right behind home plate that said vote no on it, if you guys didn't see that. I did, I don't and think I the did. people voted no. So. Um... The Lions will be unveiling new uniforms on April 18th. Oh, that's... Yes. The NFL is to play on Christmas Day 2024, despite the holiday falling on a Wednesday. Yes, we get Wednesday football. Yes! Oh, God, I knew that... Tommy was gonna be a sicko about this. Fuck yeah, it's better than watching fucking NBA. No, I didn't listen. That's a low ass bar. Okay. Exactly. Then, um, but still, we got NFL football. The NFL owners approved moving the trade deadline to after week nine. Good. 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 Uh, Peacock will broadcast a game from Brazil that will involve the Eagles in week one. Bad, bad. Send them to good. Brazil and get ready Not for streamies. Good. And uh, Amazon is getting a wild card game this year. Bad, also not bad. Good. Also not good. Um, former Falcons running back Cordero Patterson agrees to a two-year deal with the Steelers. Bad, bad. Uh, uh, Chiefs signed rugby star Lewis Rezamit as a running back or wide that receiver. Very bad. And that he ran a 4.43 in the 40-yard dash. Bad. Very bad. That is very and, bad. And uh, the Chiefs also signed Super Bowl-winning veteran quarterback Carson Wentz to back up Patrick Mahomes this year. Dude, I thought that was a – I dead-ass thought that was an April Fool's joke. I dead-ass thought that was an April Fool's joke. Then I actually go to Ian Rappaport's Twitter, and I'm like, oh, shit. That's actually real. They actually did that shit. And then – I had meant to send this earlier during the college section, but I thought that you boys would both enjoy this since we are all rooting for North Carolina State. No? In the tournament, because this is big baller basketball. No. Go Huskies? Hi, Shaq. Yes, we have we have Shaq I'm bump in the uh, North Carolina I'm State fight song, and uh, that that's all I got, man. All right, and it's now time for MIPs. Who go first? I go first. My most idiotic 
goes to the Chiefs for uh, signing my paralysis demon. I. You talking about Rashid Rice? No. They signed no, my Carson paralysis Wentz. demon. Carson Wentz. Oh. Oh. My most idiotic is Rashid Rice. Um, it's not him. He, look- he, lin- he lint out the car. It wasn't him. Doesn't matter. Still, he was. It's still technically. He's still technically an accessory to the fact. My uh, most idiotic goes to uh, uh, goes to a Jaguars employee this week. Who and his name is Tony Khan. Who is a registered sex offender? Who just recently got. 220 year prison sentence for producing a CP and abuse material and hacking it onto the Jumbotron there at uh, the stadium. There's no way. There's no way. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the idiot for the week. <laughs> Okay, Tommy, you're most impressive. Uh, Godzilla and Kong. Why would that be? Because there's a scene where Godzilla and Kong are fighting in Egypt. Oh. And fucking Godzilla. It's a goddamn superplex on fucking King Kong. It's the other way around, Tommy. No. No, it was Godzilla hitting the suplex on King Kong. Uh-huh. I've no, seen Godzilla hit a fucking superplex on Kong, bro. I, I, I couldn't remember because I was because I saw it too, and it is my most impressive this week as well. Oh my god! One for being an actually good American-made Godzilla or Kong movie because they actually included like a human element into it, and it wasn't just fighting the entire time. What are you talking about? But, uh, he should just be fighting. That I that paid suplex to see was big crazy. Monkey fight. I paid to see Big Kong, Monkey Kong, fight Kong Big Redemption Lizard. Arc for real. Kong Redemption I Arc. See, I paid to see Big Monkey Kong was fight literally, Big Kong Lizard. was literally Kratos this entire fucking movie. <laughs> I paid to see Big Monkey fight Big Lizard. Scar King was fucking dope. Although I really wish this movie could have... I, I was leaving the movie... Moving, leaving the theater, I was like... And this really could have benefited from a longer runtime. Or just more fighting. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Like a longer runtime, maybe like another oh. two hours. S- same runtime. Although I was more pissed. fighting. Although I was pissed, I didn't see a thirty-minute makeout session between Godzilla and Kong. Whoa! Whoa! What the hell? I was pissed. <laughs> you oh, ever watch that mini video? You ever watch the Smitty video of the Godzilla and Kong Call of Duty collaboration? And then, like, Puffer's like, oh, they should make out. No, I haven't, but okay. Um, my most impressive goes to the Royal starting pitcher. You mean just Brady Singer? No, I also mean Alec and Marsh Cole today. Wiggins. Or, yeah, and Alec Marsh today. And Marsh. And, uh, Waka and uh, Lugo, uh, Lugo, like, Reagan's. I already said we already said Reagan's, but yeah, the the starting pitchers for the Royals, you know. They're my, also Jordan Lyles because now he can pitch. Are you fucking kidding me? Tell me what is your honor. Honorable idiot of the week, uh, Matt Quattraro, not knowing how to use the bullpen and blowing games. With uh, putting in Will Smith and just choking the game away. Anyway, um, it's now time for who he play for. Who he play for this week? He has played for. Four different teams. He has been playing since year 2008. So, he's been in this oh, league damn. for... He's still active in the league? 
Correct. Um, he is a six-time Pro Bowler, one-time All-Pro, Hall of Fame All-2010s team, 2017 uh, Defensive Player of the Year, 2017 what? Defensive Player of the Year on another thing, 2019 Walter Payton Man of the Year, so this is a football player. and yes, oh, 2023, football player. Okay. 2023 Allen Page Award. And our player this week is none other than Calias Campbell. I'm keeping a buck with you, Chief. I've never heard of this guy before in my life. Who? <laughs> you don't know who oh, Calias wow. Campbell is? Uh, okay, let's just start naming teams off. The Jets. The Bears. I no. I think for the Bears. No. Oh, man. Uh, the Giants? The Giants. No! You don't Bills. know who this man is. <laughs> the oh, Lions? Man. No! The Patriots? No! Well, he wasn't a the chief, Chiefs? I know that. The You're Colts? correct with that, Brock. No. Yeah, so I didn't think he Wait, was, what was he correct with? Him not being he a chief. He was correct with not being a chief. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Rams. Was he a... No. Uh, the Chargers? <laughs> the, no. The Raiders? No. There's an entire division down. The Jaguars. The fucking Seattle. Yes! The Jaguars. Three okay. years. He was there okay. 2017, 18, and 19, in which he was a pro bowler all three years and part of the 2017 insane Jaguars defense. Okay. Uh, Houston. Seattle? No and no. Tennessee. No. San Francisco. Dallas. No. No, Tommy. Phil Philadelphia. No. Washington. No. Tampa yeah, Bay. Another division over there. Arizona. Yes, he spent the first nine years of his career in Arizona. Well, that would be why I've never heard of him. <laughs> he's, it just sounds like he's playing for a bunch of shit franchises, Ben. At, at Fairweather football fans. No, I'm just still got I don't, two more teams. How am I Fairweather? He's a defensive player, and I don't care that much about the NFL. You know what football I care about more? Hell, I care more about the UFL. Or the, is, is it the Colts? No, then I don't give a shit. Still got uh, two more teams. His okay. current one and the one before it. The Ravens, because they have... Uh, yes, he was in the Ravens 2020 to 2022. Okay, the Stellars. No. No. The Browns. No. South. The Bengals, because that's south of... South. Cleveland. No. The Falcons. Yes. Yay. You got See, it. See, he's just played for all these shitty franchises. Why are you expecting me to know this? Dude, oh my gosh. Ben. You guys don't know who Calias Campbell is? The guy's a you unit. Calias Campbell? Are you saying his name wrong? No. That was the most unsure no one I've ever heard in my life. But the bro is 6'8", 280. Okay, just because he's okay, big don't mean he's I know. Okay, fuck. Who cares? We don't know who the Shame. fuck this you, is. You guys, you guys need to play more, more older Maddens, bro. Uh, I, I have Madden 11, and that's the only one I play that's older. In fact, that's the only Madden oh, I play. Oh, shout out. Okay, hold on. I forgot it for one most impressive. I don't know if this is an April Fool's joke or not, but shout out to the fucking Helldivers 2 community for doing the one thing we have finally been, they have finally been able to do. They did it. They actually fucking did it. Dude has a hundred and five and a half sacks on his career. Still Fuck, playing at thirty eight years old. Fuck they did it. Malevolent Creek is a hundred percent liberated. They liberated Malevolent Creek. They it's, gave it it's... they did. They gave they gave the, the community twenty four hours. They did it in five. Yep. 
I was like, I was reading that on my break. I'm like, this is the fucking sickest April Fool's joke I've ever seen. They did it. Anyway. Um. I just had a stroke. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I have some initial uh, reactions from some of the uh, some locals here in Kansas City uh, about the uh, the vote uh, from one of my buddies. I'm kind of glad they voted no. Another buddy who works at Kaufman said, "I turned on a faucet in Crown Club and urine came out." Another <laughs> one of my buddies says, "I don't live there anymore, but downtown Ball and Ballpark District connecting to Power Light would have been the most dope shit ever." Wanna See, keep, I'd, okay, hold on. I want to keep out. the box and Temptations, but they had a good run. Downtown Ball would have been raw, but I guess we'll never know. Uh, another buddy, we didn't even know that. The plans didn't even look that cool. It looked like a mess. There was no crown board, and that kind of pissed me off. Dude, they should just go to Northtown. Just go to Clay County. Just move to Omaha. Go to Clay County. No, move to Omaha. That's it. I'm, you know what? I'm tired of this team. No, Tommy, I'm tired of this team. I'm tired of this team. Moving to Omaha. God, I have to drive three hours to go to a Royals yeah, game? Three hours north to no. go watch a fucking baseball game. No. Yeah, great idea. No. Trade them. We get the AAA team. They get the Major League team. They can play at Kaufman. The Performing Arts Center? Yes. Yes, totally the Performing Arts Center, Ben. They just need to go to fucking Northtown. Like, they should have done it in the first place. Anyway. Um. NCAA. Anybody feeling an NCAA basket or foot baseball, whatever the fuck it is, update? This week, I mean, you can. I did not watch a shred of baseball. Well, not all this weekend. Look up the, uh, the, the standings, though, sir. So you can do that. I don't even have them pulled up. Yeah, they're not hard to find. Good God. They're, these people have a lot to say about. Ben, there is the home run leaders for D1. If you would like to read those off while I get the... We have a, a new fella joining. We have several with, uh, new ones. Yes. I have no idea what school this is. Hang on. Um, I need to look at the picture again. I can tell you. Austin P. Ah. We have Austin P, Lyle Miller Green, with 15 home runs tied for third place. Travis Bazna, still on the list, tied for third with 15 home runs for Oregon State. Grant Nip of Campbell is tied for third with 15. A new guy on the list, Brayden Montgomery of Texas A&M, is in second place with 16. And the Dong father, Charlie Condon of Georgia, is in first with 19. All right, Tommy, there are the updated rankings, and I know you're going to geek out about one of them in particular. Whoa! Yeah. All right, so we're going to go from 25 to 1. At number 25, we have UCF joining the rankings after being previously not ranked last week. Nebraska has joined the ranks at number 24. They are at 25 this season. Mississippi State fell down to 23 as they were previously ranked 21st at 19 and 10 on the year. South Carolina dropped a pretty few good spots. They were at 18. They are now at 22 at 21 and 7 on the year. Wake Forest continues to stumble. Yeah, I don't previously think they're going to go to Omaha now. Previously being ranked 12th. Are now 17 and 10 on the season and are now ranked 21st 
Coastal Carolina is 20-7 and seven on the year. They are ranked 20th after being ranked 19th last week, so dropping a spot. NC State gained some ground, being 18-7 and seven on the year now after being ranked 22nd last week. LSU took a giant tumble as well uh, after being ranked 8th. They are now ranked 18th or 29th in the season. Kentucky made a significant jump. Jumping all the way to 17, previously being ranked 24th last week, at 24 and 4th this season. UC Irvine jumped 4th spots to number 16, being previously ranked 20th, 22 and 3 on the year. Virginia took a stumble. They were previously ranked 9th, they are now ranked 15th. Uh, they are at 22 and 6. Florida State jumped 3 spots, they are 22 and 4, they were previously ranked 17th, they are now at 14. Um, Alabama jumped up three spots from 16 to number 13, 21 and 7 on the year. East Carolina jumped up another three spots. They are at, they are ranked 12th, and they are, they were previously ranked 16th last week. They are at 20 and 6 on the year. Virginia Tech also jumped two spots up from 13 to 11. They are at 21 and 5 on the year. North Carolina, previously ranked 14th last week, jumped up four spots to the number 10 slot, or at 25 and 4 on the year. Duke dropped two spots, or Duke, Duke jumped two spots from 11 to number 9. They're at 20 on the year. South Baptist jumped up two spots to number 8. They're at 23 and 4 on the season. This better be the year that they make it to, the, to Omaha. Please. Please, bro, please. They always get they shafted are. in the meetings, bro. They always I, get the shaft. I don't think so, but... Vandy staying rock solid at number 7 at 23 and 6. Florida still solid at the number 6 spot still at 16 and 11. As I told uh, Ben, hang on. As I told Ben this week, if they lose one game to Mizzou, they're no, dropping no. out of the top 25. They're going to fucking sink like a stone. Oregon State dropped three spots. They were previously ranked second. They are now ranked fifth. Losing two games to USC will do that. That's very true. Oregon, uh, Tennessee jumped up a spot to number four. They were previously ranked fifth. They are at 24 and 5 on the season. Texas A&M dropped a spot at... Nope, they gained a spot. Oh, Texas A&M went up a spot. They were fourth, and now they are third in the country. At 25 and 3. Clemson jumped. Yeah, Clemson jumped a spot. They were third last week. They're now second. At 24 and 3. And then no change to the number one team in the country right now. The University of Arkansas. Yep. And then the two teams that have dropped out of the top 25. Oklahoma and Kansas State. Not looking good for the Big 12 this year. No, not at all. It is not looking good for the Big 12 at all. Also, I would like to reiterate with the uh, Jackson County voting no. It's not like they're going to pack their shit up overnight and fucking move. Their lease is with Kauffman Stadium ends in 2030. So we have another... Five years at the max to figure this shit out. By the way. Yeah. So let's not let's not hit the panic button right now. Let's figure this out. And no, Omaha is not a solid option. It is. They're gonna do it. Oh, it They're is gonna not. Do it. I'm oh, telling you that right not. now. I'm telling you that right now. Watch. They're gonna have more games played in Omaha in the upcoming seasons. They're going to test that market. They're going to do it. Anyway. So now it's time for Ben's three picks. All right. Number one on my list of three things. 
gentlemen, if you didn't know, the uh, we have something quite insane this year, which is the stretch of December 20th through New Year's Day this year for um, college football, NFL, or both, in which December 20th, we get a college football playoff game. December 21st, we get three college football playoff games and NFL games. December 22nd, we get NFL games. December 23rd is Monday Night Football. December 25th, that Wednesday, is NFL Christmas Doubleheader. December 26th, Thursday Night Football. December 28th, NFL games. December 29th, NFL games. December 30th, Monday Night Football. December 31st, one college football playoff quarterfinal. And then January 1st, three college football playoff quarterfinals. Here come. Fuck yes. yes. Then uh, number two on my list of three things. We have the most popular grocery store in each state in 2022 based on foot traffic in which I have some uh, some beef with this so uh, it may or may not be right for us but there's uh, there's no way that Florida's is correct or Arkansas what is it? on this with uh, I send it to you guys, but uh, Florida is it says it's safe way, but there's no way that's possible. There's it should no be public. fucking way. It has no, to be public. No, 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 no. Safe way. It's it's got to be Publix, man. It's got to be public. There's no way. And then with Arkansas, it should be Walmart. What is Will? What is Louisiana's Win Dixie? Yeah, that's that's Win Dixie's hella accurate. But uh, Texas is for sure correct with H E B. Yeah, they love that. Yeah, no, uh, the the H E B one for Texas is very accurate. We run a lot of fucking H E B. We have a lot of H E B orders. A lot. Uh, me and Ben <laughs> can confirm Kroger is massive in Tennessee. Yes. You can land a fucking. But we did the, the Publix box. chocolate milk hits different. Dude, Publix chocolate milk, goaded. <laughs> But then, finally, number three on my list of three things. Oh. $500,000, gentlemen. This is an article that came out about how um, the Department of Conservation spent nearly $500,000 to kill... One, uh, what is this? They spent $500,000 to kill one stoat, which is basically, uh, looks like a weasel almost. Like the mix between a squirrel and a weasel type thing. And, uh, yeah. The Department of Conservation spent nearly half a million dollars on an operation to kill one stoat. In August 2022, a male stoat was identified on Chalky Island in Fiordland, which has been predator-free since 1999. Select committee documents show from the time the animal was detected to its capture eight months later. Department of Conservation spent $483,260. Hmm. The government agency huh. spent just over 210000 on ensuring the island was pest-free by installing surveillance systems and doing biosecurity planning. And uh, this it, this island is located off the coast of um, New Zealand, by the way. Hmm. But, um, yeah, imagine spending $500,000 to kill one creature. That's that's all I got. 
All right. Um, predictions time, which is where we just leave SFL because they aren't having any good calls to play real soon as this week. Uh, hey, Ben, this is kind of some news that's really adjacent to Mizzou. Um, Seton Hall is currently leading Georgia in the MI- NIT semifinals. Mm. Both teams beat Mizzou this year. Week two. Somebody get some. Oh wait, wait. Tell me. Hit the hit the button. It's now time for picks. Hold on. Hey, which one? You know the one. That's the wrong one. Can you say it again. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's now time for picks. <laughs> From the U.S. or from the U.F.L. It takes some time to say in the U.F.L. I know. The San Antonio Brahmos, who are currently undefeated, take on the Memphis Showboats, who are also undefeated, in Memphis, you Tennessee. Memphis. And can either one of you guess where this is being played? And why won't it let me click on the games? That's crazy. That's weird. Where it's being played? Yeah. Uh, wherever the hell the University of Memphis plays their football games. So, the Liberty Bowl? Yes. Yes, that is the guy's real life school. Uh, Kami, you said Memphis? Ben, what about you? Yeah. Fuck the Brahmas. Um, Brahmas are with Rock. Fuck the Rock. We go in uh, Memphis because Memphis built different. I'm going with San Antonio. In a battle of teams that are currently winless, the Arlington Renegades travel to the Battle Dome to take on your St. Louis Battlehawks! I'm a car. I'm a car. I'm a car. I'm gonna car so goddamn hard. I'm gonna car. I'm gonna car so goddamn hard. So goddamn hard. The Stallions from Birmingham, take on the Panthers of Michigan at Ford Field and probably in front of what will probably be about 10 people. Six. Six. Let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, if you saw the crowd from last week's game, it, it, it was no more than 22 people it looked like in that stadium. So. Um, Salians I'm Panthers. Gonna go, with, I'm going with the Panthers. Give me the Panthers, dude. They got the best kicker in the league. I'm going with Birmingham. Roughnecks and Defenders. It's DC's home opener. So you know that beer snake's going to be massive this week. Oh, I was trying to say, I'm going to go with DC. Because that cup snake is going to be amazing. Ben? DC's going to lose. Oh, you're going with the Roughnecks, huh? Yeah. I am going with Tommy. I'm going with the Roughnecks. So there you go. That is our picks for the week. Tommy, where can you be found on Twitter? I can be found on Twitter at dude underscore rec 14. The D and the R are capitalized. Brooke. I can be found on Twitter at Brooke Gordon 99. The B and the G are capitalized. And I can be found on Twitter at Elite Tiger Sport. The E, the T, and the S are capitalized. Guys, where can where can where can the B card Twitter account be found from? At, at the underscore card, E and T, the D, the C, and the E are all capitalized. That is correct. Um, what else? I don't think that's it. That's, that's all we, we got. Tune into our else? live stream this week where we'll be. Yeah, we only stream it live. I have predictions this week. Um, we'll be, we'll be talking, Thursday. we'll be reacting to the, to the rest of, to the, oh, oh, WrestleMania. Yeah, this is our live. Pump it up, pump it up. What is this picture I just found? Have a wonderful rest of your week, folks. Goodbye, everybody.